Chapter 4 The Emergency Meeting Poppy ran across the lopsided porch and into the parlor. The whole family had indeed gathered. The father, Poppy's father, thimble on his head, was on his accustomed perch atop an old straw hat already addressing the crowd. The moment Poppy entered the room, he saw her. Ah, Poppy, he cried, you're late, but at least you're here. All the mice, a sea of ears, eyes, pink noses, and whiskers, turned to look at her. But where's Ragweed? Lungwort demanded. Wasn't he with you? Do you think he'll have the common decency, not to mention courtesy, to consider joining us at this moment of crisis? Or is he beyond all that? With so many eyes fixed on her, Poppy could not speak. Well, Poppy, Lungwort asked, do you know where your friend is? Poppy stammered. May I tell you after the meeting? Lungwort murmured a, hmm, as well as an, I suppose, and thoughtless children, concluding with, just take your place, please. Poppy slipped forward and crouched down next to Basil, her favorite younger cousin. Where have you guys been? Basil whispered. Out, Poppy replied weakly. You don't look so good. What happened to your nose? I can't explain now. And where is Ragweed? Later, Poppy insisted. Basil gave his question cousin a questioning look, but held his tongue. Lungwort, leaning over the crown of the farmer's hat, tapped his thimble cap and held up a paw to command silence. For Poppy's sake, he began, I'll review what I've said already. Our family has grown very large, so large, in fact, that there is not enough food in this neighborhood to feed us all. Indeed, our family is still an expanding one. He nodded to sweet Cicely, who smiled wanly in a dutiful recognition of the remark. For example, Lungwork continued, my wife and I have had 75 children, who in turn have given us 40 grandchildren, 20 great-grandchildren, and 12 great-great-grandchildren. This remark was greeted by the assembled mice with a generous tapping of tails upon the floor. Lungwork dipped his head in acknowledgement of the tribute. Then he went on, the truth is, by my calculations, our current rate of population growth, and it's this I was about to say when Poppy arrived, promises serious for food shortages, sickness, and yes, death, unless we take action within the next few days. There was an immediate buzz and a squeak among the family. Good grief! How awful! What'll we do now? Who would have guessed? Lungwort raised his voice over the hubbub. Living in the open will not do. The dangers of that are obvious. No, we need to establish an extra residence, a home near to abundant food, but still close enough to Grey House so that the family with its present leadership can be maintained. And of course, the second dwelling must be safe. Happily, I have been informed by an old sparrow acquaintance of mine, Mr. Albicollis, that a new home has been built within the territory. Again, there was chatter. Where? Have you seen it? What's it like? It's on the northern side of Dimwood Forest. New house, it's called. A half day's trek from here. <clears throat> That's so far. Almost another country. I've never been away from home. I bet it's not as good as this place. Lungwort held up a paw. The talk stilled. This new house is reachable by the tar road across the bridge and beyond New Field, which I've been informed has abundant food. Somebody else can go. Wonder what kind of food there is. I doubt I'd do well there. Naturally, I will need to investigate New House with care. Would I get a room of my own? Can I keep sharing with Tansy? They'll never get me to go. I won't buck bunk with Husk. Further, there will be much organizing and packing to be done. I hate the thought of packing. I have too much to move. I just put together a whole new room. Finally, Lungwort went on. We will need a delegation to go through the formality of applying to Mr. Okax for permission to move. This time, Lungwort's words brought silence. Every eye looked down or away, except for Poppy's. She could only stare at her father in revulsion. How could he even suggest such a thing? Now, now, Lungwort said severely, Mr. Okax has always been most accommodating. Need I remind you that he protects us from porcupines? We all know about porcupines, don't we? We do indeed. Have we seen so much as one porcupine in these parts for years? Not one. Proof that Mr. Okax is holding up his end of the bargain. As long as I'm head of this family, I expect us to do our part. 
asking his permission to move is an insignificant sacrifice to make for our well-being. All right, then, Lungwort concluded, looking around. Any questions? Poppy had no idea what ragweed what rag would have asked, but she knew it would have been something. Good, Lungwort said. I thank you for your attention. Go about your business. I will keep you informed as always. Poppy, be so good as to remain. I'd like a private word. With much excited chatter, the mice scurried off until only Poppy, her parents, and Basil remained. Now, can you tell me what's going on? Basil asked. You're looking really bad. Poppy, trying to find the words to tell her parents about ragweed, had closed her eyes. Basil tugged at her. Poppy, did something happen to ragweed? Poppy gave a quick nod. What? Poppy, her father called from across the parlor. I'm waiting. Poppy opened her eyes and turned to Basil. Stay close, she said to him. I'm going to need you. Slowly, Poppy crept toward her parents and Basil trailed behind. As his daughter approached, Lungwort drew himself up with slow dignity. Well, Poppy, he said, I suppose I should be grateful that you managed to find time for a family meeting. Papa, Poppy began, you see, suddenly sweet Cicely asked, Poppy, what did you do to your nose? It's that we can deal with her nose later, Lungwort interrupted. What I wish to say first, Poppy, is this. As I made my announcement about the house, you did hear it, didn't you? Yes. When I mentioned making up a delegation to go to Mr. Oakax, I was saddened that not one of your brethren or cistern would look me in the eye. <clears throat> it was as if they were fearful. But you, Poppy, were steady on the mark. Your eye never wavered, straight and loyal. I admire that in a young mouse. Therefore, I have selected you by way of a reward, and it is a grand one, isn't it, Mother? Sweet Cicely, brushing at her ears, smiled thinly. Right then, Lungwort continued, Poppy, I have selected you to go with me to Mr. Oakax. You what? Poppy cried. I know it's an unlooked-for honor, but you heard me right. You will join me when I go to Mr. Oakax. But, but, Poppy tried to find words, but could not. But what? But Mr. Oakax just ate ragweed, Poppy blurted out. There was stunned silence. Ate ragweed? Sweet Cicely finally gasped, her voice half gargle, half squeak. Did I hear you correctly? Trying to stop her tears, Poppy nodded. When? Lungwort demanded shrilly. How? Why didn't you tell me? I barely got back, Poppy sobbed, and when I walked into the meeting, I couldn't just say. Pawing the tears from her face, she whispered, I couldn't. But to be eaten by Mr. Oakax, Lungwort sputtered, without even informing me. Sweet Cicely suddenly turned on her husband. Oh, stop that, she cried. We need to know what happened. Poppy, go on. Poppy, her heart heavy, stammered, We, that is, Ragweed and I, last night we went out to Bannock Hill. I mean, we had never been before. It was such a beautiful summer night, and we thought it would be romantic. It was lovely, and he had just asked me. Poppy paused to look at her parents. Certainly they would not be sympathetic. She decided to skip some parts of her story. Then Ragweed found a hazelnut, she went on. He loves, loved nuts. So he started to eat it. I told him that he should get under cover. He wouldn't listen. And then, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Mr. Oakax burst upon us. I hadn't heard a thing. He was just there. He almost got me too, she added, pointing to her nose. But he caught ragweed, she whispered. It was awful. Sweet Cicely hurried forward, gathered her daughter in a hug, and patted her back. A very uncomfortable lungwort kept clearing his throat and fiddling with his whiskers. And then, Poppy went on, once she was su sufficiently calmed, when I started back home, Mr. Oakax tried to catch me, again, but I managed to escape. Lungwort shook his head. Poppy, he intoned, I'm bound to ask, did you go through the proper formalities before going up on the hill? Well, I, that is, we, come now, Lungwort cried, his agitation bursting out his anger. Did you or did you not ask Mr. Oakax for permission to go up there? Answer me. No, Poppy admitted. Well then, Lungwort said, if Ragweed's death can be an object lesson to the rest of the family, perhaps what happened will serve as a useful purpose. Good out of bad, so to speak.
Ragweed wasn't bad, Poppy objected. I never said he was bad, but without doubt his thinking was bad. He was a rude, thoughtless, headstrong mouse. Not one of ours, I may point out. Indeed, if your friend had followed the rules, if he had accepted things as they are, if he had listened to me, he would be with us today. Such a short, unhappy life, sweet Cicely sighed. I warned him, Poppy, Longwort declared. I did. Let no mouse say otherwise. Though he was no son of mine, I did my duty by him. But he would not pay heed. There should be a lesson learned from this. Poppy tried to protest. But Ragweed and I... Again, Longwort interrupted. Poppy, two things. First, I want you to go among the rest of the family and explain what happened to your unfortunate friend. Be so kind as to point out the cause that you did not ask permission from Mr. Okax. I desire no such tragedies to befall one of us. Is that understood? Yes, sir. Second, what I said stands about your coming with me when I request permission from Mr. Okax for our move. Let's hope your presence will convince him that, one, you truly are apologetic for what you have done, and, two, in the future you will ask for his permission before venturing anywhere. So saying, Lungwort, with one paw about Sweet Cicely, went off, leaving Poppy and Basil alone. Poppy looked after them for such a long time that Basil reached out and touched her. Poppy, he asked, you all right? Basil, Poppy said with a mix of sadness and anger, Ragweed wasn't unhappy or bad. He wasn't. Maybe he was cocky at times, but I loved him for it. I did. Once again, tears trickled down her face. Poppy, Basil asked, are you really going to go to Mr. Okax? I don't think I have much choice, do I? Only I do wonder what'll happen when he recognizes me. Her cousin's eyes grew wide. Think he will? Poppy pointed to the scratch on her nose. How can he? He put this there.